Good morning, everyone. This is Professor, Ro Professor Robinson here with another lecture on EZF signal transduction pathway. So what is this EZF signal transduction pathway and how the EZF signaling molecule is involved in this pathway? I'm going to explain in detail in this lecture. EZF signal pathway is also called as RA, RAS, RAF, MEK, and ERK signaling pathway. So what is this EZF? EZF stands for epidermal growth factor, and this is the signaling molecule in EZF signal transduction pathway. So this signaling molecule EZF actually binds to the receptor that is called EZF receptor or EZFR. R stands for receptor. So this EZF receptor actually in unbound state when the EZP has not bound to the EZF receptor, in that state actually this occurs as a two separate identical monomeric units containing one ex containing extracellular domain where the this the, where it has the EZF binding site and the intracellular domain where uh, it has the tyrosine kinase the, the, the domain. So again, I would like to repeat this. It, the EZF receptor consists of two identical. You see one monomer here and another monomer here. These two monomers are identical and they have extracellular EZF binding, EZF binding domain and intracellular tyrosine kinase domain. And this is actually spanning the membrane. This part of this, this monomers is spanning the membrane. So what happens is that when two EZF molecules actually bind here and here on the binding side of EZF receptor, the conformational change of this monomer, the, the, this EZF receptor occurs. So basically, these arms of monomeric units actually they attach with each other, and also same things happens inside the cell. So they they attach with each other, and this process is actually called dimerization. So from two identical separated, two identical and separated monomers, in this case they become one dimer which are attached and not separated. Right. So after the when this, this conformational changes occurs actually this C the C terminal region of Tyson kinase domain actually it reaches the active site of another another monomer another monomer and then actually well, what happens is that phosphorylation of this C terminal uh, tyrosine kinase ratio or tyrosine kinase domain occurs. And same thing with the another another C terminus of tyrosine kinase domain, it reaches to the active site and the phosphorylation occurs. So this is actually called cross phosphorylation because one a C terminal domain of C terminus of tyrosine kinase domain, C terminal tail of tyrosine kinase domain reaching to the active site in another another monomer and phosphorylation occurring and vice versa and for this this goes to the active site here and phosphorylation occurs so that's why this is called cross phosphorylation even though in the pictures i have shown only three but actually up to five tyrosine ratios are phosphorylated so then why, what is the importance of this pathway as I explained here is that this pathway is involved in growth and division of epidermal and epithelial cells. Now I would like to come to the concluding points of this slide. The thing what is happening here is that two EZF molecules actually they are binding to the EZF binding site present extracellularly and that actually leads to the dimerization of EZF receptor. Okay? and which actually leads to the cross phosphorylation of carboxy terminal tails of intracellular tyrosine kinase domain. So this is what is happening. So, so now coming to the next slide, what happens after the uh, cross phosphorylation of carboxy terminal tails of tyrosine kinase domain has occurred? So the thing is, this phosphorylated region of EZF receptor, actually, this phosphorylated region of EZF receptor, it acts as an anchor for an adapter protein, and that is called GRB2, right? So GRB2 stands for growth factor receptor-bound protein, right? So this is an adapter protein. So then what 
this GRB2 does is that GRB2 recruits um, another protein called SOS, right? And then SOS actually binds RAS protein, a, a small G protein. This activates actually RAS by expelling GTP and binding GTP. When the RAS is activated, then it moves on to activate another protein that is called RAF. Right? Then activated RAF moves on to activate another protein kinase that is called MEK make and activated make moves on to activate another protein kinase called ERK. ERK is uh, shown here stands for extracellular signal regulated kinases. And these ERKs actually they enter to the nucleus, they enter to the nucleus and act activate transcription factors and that actually leads to the gene expression in the nucleus. And when the gene expression occurs, that leads to the you know, protein synthesis. And this protein synthesis will ultimately lead to enlargement of cytoskeleton and also to the cell growth. So again, I would like to summarize the key points in this, this pathway. So activated, so phosphorylated, a carboxy terminal region of uh, this EZF receptor, it acts as an anchor for uh, the adapter protein called GRB2. GRB2 recruits another protein called SOS. Then SOS actually binds to protein kinase called RAS-RAS and RAS is activated by, by expelling GDP and attaching uh, or GTP. And then this activated RAS activates another protein called RAF and activated RAF activates another protein called MEK and activated MEK activates another protein called ERK and ERK actually activates transcription factors leading to the ex gene expression in the nucleus. So the thing is it is really important to check this pathway because if we don't control it the protein synthesis will occur, protein synthesis will occur continuously and all that will lead to the enlargement of cell cytoskeleton and the cell so this has to be checked and in the body actually to check this you know we have two systems one is the phosphatases they remove the phosphate group from the kinases and the second is this RAS RAS protein here so this RAS protein has GTPase and then actually it will you know remove the phosphate group from the GTP and converting to GTP and prevent its activation so by two ways this uh, EZF signal transition pathway will be checked. Thank you very much, everyone, for your kind attention. I hope I was able to explain you EZF signal transition pathway in a simple and easy terms. Thank you.